So there's an interesting thing. You were you were from Asheville. Yes. And you were there doing the rescue. That's such a weird yeah. somewhat coincidence that Sam and his daughter are from and live in Asheville. His daughter still lives in Asheville, right? Yeah. Yes. But I honestly forgot. I was flying up there when Sam texted me. But could I mention one thing? Of course. And he'll kill me for doing it, but I'm going to do it. He took in person to my daughter because my, uh, there were some stores that were open, not many, but they would accept cash only. So what does this man right here take up our tour? In person? Cash. Oh. Now, I tried to take her with me, but she wouldn't leave. She's a nurse, so she had to stay. Oh, okay. Which was very honorable I of her. I did ask her like about her that. Father. I said, you can get out of there, you know. And she says, uh, Dad, I can't do it. Okay. And she didn't. So you were actually there on site with his daughter at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's crazy. Yes. That's such a weird coincidence of fate, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was hard to get in touch with her, too. Oh, there was just it's no comms. Sketchy on the phones, my goodness. Couldn't get nothing. You know? And the highways? Oh, well, you know how that Only Starlink. Work. Yeah. Starlink was really yeah. the only thing that worked. Yeah. What did you think you were getting into when you went there? Because, like, we were talking that morning. I think <clears> we were, I think I was with you the morning you left, and you. it seemed yeah. almost like a last-minute decision to go there, and then you were there for days. Yeah, it was totally last minute. <laughs> we uh, were going to dinner with George and Bogey. And we were, so we were like kitting up the helicopter to go get them. And we were going to go to like a dinner. I don't know. And uh, one of the guys hit me up from up, that was up there flying. He, he's a local guy. So he just had his helicopter in the area. And he just called me and said, we need a, We need more helicopters. And Maddie and I went back and forth on it like 10 times because we didn't even, it didn't sound, he was like, yeah, I think, you know, I'm flying there now. And I just helped a couple people out and seems like they need more. And it's like, okay, so it seems like it. We don't know. There's zero information coming from North Carolina on the social media. So I just said, well, Maddie, why don't we just go to North Carolina? And if there's nothing there, we'll go to dinner. Uh, we'll go meet up with Greg Biffle or something. And then we posted that we were going that same day. And, like, mass flooding of my email mm -hmm. <clears throat> that people haven't been able to reach their – their relatives for days, which is crazy because it happened Friday morning and we didn't yeah. go till Saturday. It's like even Sam was like, I, yeah. I, I don't even know. Yeah. And there's just nothing on the news. So it's really strange. I had no idea what we were getting into. It was a situation we really hadn't seen before where <clears throat> there was like radio silence out of the area because there's everything was so literally nothing shut nothing. down. No phones without anything. Starlink. They would <laughs> still probably not have real good contact. I think it is still messed up, even with Starlink. Oh, Star it's very, very sketchy now, very, very, very much That's so. That's crazy. And even the hospital doesn't have water, the one she works at, you know? Really? They bring in trucks every day, these big tanker trucks, hook it right to that. That's the water supply for the hospital, and take the waste out. So it's fresh water in on one, waste water out on another. Damn. Daily they're doing, so they haven't given them a definite time when they will have water back. Well, even like the city in general, the roads going in and out don't seem like they're going to be... Oh, no, no. I think they have some now, right? There, there's some roads and leave. some of the, um, <clears throat> quote, back roads, if you will, and there's a couple of the main roads that are open that weren't uh, in the – they're in the flood zone, but they weren't in the, in the landslide areas. But she can get back and forth to the hospital pretty good. But there's a lot of the ones – especially the close. The, yeah, it's very close to the hospital. But the connector goes from Asheville to Knoxville. Mm, it's going to be out for a while. I think they said the I, – I know where I-40 broke. Mm -hmm. They said uh, September 2025 is when it will be opened back up. That? That's a pretty major yeah. point of travel for their mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Well, they're using mules as a source of getting people things. Mm -hmm. If it's yeah. not a helicopter, there's not really a good way to get up a ravine like that. Yeah. I mean, the first week, there was nothing. It was only helicopter. Yeah. And maybe – really awesome off-road vehicles in some areas, but I'd say at least 50% of it was only helicopter. That's crazy. And even the time frame felt weird because the hurricane hadn't made landfall in Florida yet, but I was seeing on the news mm -hmm. already the yeah. flooding and lands, and it was yeah, like it was yeah. just pouring rain. It was yeah. right next to us, and it was already yeah. hitting them, which yeah. felt so off. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, like, for us, the storm went by, was it Thursday the storm went through? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. 
So the storm went through Thursday, and then Friday, it was like, okay, the storm's gone. We're we're all back to normal lives. We're like working on the Dale truck. We're out testing it, and uh, had no idea because all the like real bad stuff happened Friday morning in Asheville. Yeah, and then like just nothing. Didn't hear a thing about it till Saturday afternoon. Yeah, which is nuts. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense. And then it, they seemed like they were aiming at you and your family because then the next one hit us directly. Oh, my. <laughs> the storms were following. I was like, it was, if one hits Houston. <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, Houston, we do have a problem. That was, wow, that, that was a big storm, big storm. You know, Both of them. Yeah. I mean, the one that was about to hit here, too, then all of a sudden, like that just weakened. We were about to get the worst hit potentially of ever. Slammed. We were getting ready to get slammed. It big, still was ripping. It, I mean, I'm guaranteeing. Yeah, trust me, it, it was bad enough as was, mm-hmm. you know. The, man, God. And you know, I just had a new roof put on. Not one shingle was out of place. Damn. No one. Mm. I about mean, to not rip one. one off. Just you got to take one off. <laughs> <laughs> one I'm off. missing about thirty percent of my shingles. I think. That is. Amazing. Have you seen on the shop? Is the shop good? Can you Shop's see good. it there? Yeah. Shop's metal roof, brother. Well, I meant yeah. on your yeah. shop at your house. Oh, yeah. I didn't know if you looked on there. Yeah, it's missing about 30% as well. Mm. That, that was a storm to be reckoned with. That was, Sam, it, Sam had to do some buffing this week on the toter because all my shingles hit the toter. Oh, my. Oh, that man. thing? He cleaned her up, though. Ooh, it was it's just tar marks across it. it. Oh, down the sea, yeah. Literally. It, well, and, and some of them hit with the sandy side into the paint or into the clear coat. Oh, my, yeah. Garrett but. lost three chicken coops in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm literally on my fourth chicken coop of 2024. <laughs> I mean, what in the world? We had that baby tied down. Man. The vinyl fencing is crazy, too, because vinyl fencing just doesn't last. Dude. And they I'm, keep putting it up everywhere. <laughs> I'm wondering if DeSantis is going to, like, stop PVC fence in Florida. Uh, that seems like something obvious for him to do. Because if you fly the coast, the water is full of PVC fence. It's definitely the most littered object of the storm situations. If it wasn't for that fencing, <clears throat> most of the county would actually look pretty good. 100%. But it's like most of the debris is just fencing. Very valid. You come through some of the new developments over there, <laughs> fencing is everywhere. Have you been to my house? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's a... There's two miles of it in my yard. <laughs> it's just everywhere, you know. But okay, you know, the pictures of the hurricanes on the thing, it's that fencing. Here it goes. Do they do that? On, do they build it like that on purpose? Just, you know, job to security, get people maybe? To buy yeah, security? Ab- Most of the PVC fence around my house is the absolute cheapest, yeah. least, you know, lowest quality possible. And they put it up in like two hours. Exactly. Oh, full two miles yeah. of it. So, you, I mean, it's not even a hurricane comes by, just a good old thunderstorm yeah, comes through and it's down. Grip. It's down. crazy. And all of the posts, <clears throat> posts went with it, you know. And it's just, yeah, there it is. This time it bent every post, so it now they really got to do it. Right. It's, yeah. it's quite the, but it's part of it, I guess, is maybe sell more, job security, whatever way you want to look at it. But it's sure done its job. But yeah. I look for DeSantis to say, you know, we're going to have to find a Ban. better way to attach Ban things. PVC fencing. It almost seems like they should just stop using it. I don't even see why you have to ban it. It just seems so obvious that it's a horrible, horrible idea. It is cheap. It's it's crazy. So to touch on the the rescuing a little bit more, because obviously I want to talk about that a little yes. bit, a little bit more in depth, because it's pretty crazy to spur of the moment you and your wife go and yeah, partially lead. I, I would mean. venture to say a yes. rescue <clears throat> effort that that is correct. I know the. Federal government was there, but it, they were a little slower than private citizens, it seemed. Yeah. I mean, when we left, it was at the point where, like, the operator we worked with, which was Operation Airdrop, told us that there was nothing life-critical they had on their list is when we left. Mm-hmm. So they had a bunch of, you know, a bunch of people were putting their calls into this operation, and then they would send us there, and then when, when that dried up, like real life situations, as far as they knew at that time, that's when we were able to feel good about leaving because we had left. Our, I mean, we didn't intend to leave the kids for three days with the grandparents, but Maddie really wanted to get back to them. So yeah. it was like we kind of had to go, and then they said, "Hey, we don't have anything for you right now." And that was the first time we had like sat down on the asphalt, and they had not sent us right back out. So that was when we 
rolled out. Were you in a better helicopter than what the military seems to have? Because it seems like a Black Hawk almost isn't the right route for what you're doing, but I don't know what else they have, like, yeah. ready I mean, to go. So they have Lakotas, which is, like, an EC-145, and they had those out there hoisting people. Mm -hmm. So, But they only have, I think, 159 of them or something. Black Hawks are the best. Helicopter period, I think. Yeah. But the rotor wash is 140 mile an hour or something. When you take one of those into somewhere, yeah. I mean, it'll it, it'll crush the trees below it. So <clears throat> if you can't get a good enough clearing, you can't safely get in. Like those pilots can get in small areas, but it, it's not really that big of a deal for them to do. It's just that it'll blow everything out and then all that stuff goes up and then back over onto the helicopter. Mm -hmm. So that's why the private guys, honestly, that's why they all shined so much is because a Bell 407 or a Bell 206, a, even the Robinsons, which is like the piston helicopters, a lot of those guys were getting into really small areas to help people. And like the MD-500 is definitely a really good one because it's so small and it's so high horsepower that it can just go and then right back out. But that, the other end of that is private helicopters, some of them don't have a lot of horsepower. <clears throat> like a, a Robinson with four people in it, you know, in full fuel, really can't take off vertically. So if you go into a hole, you, you certainly can't take people out of it yeah. unless you yourself, the pilot, are like 100 pounds yeah. and the other people are light too. So... But they, they strategized around that by sending, like, the piston helicopters that maybe were a little bit less able to uh, just maybe run supplies to this Harley-Davidson dealership, which was cool. And then, like, the turbine guys, which are the higher horsepower helicopters, they gave all of us, you know, stuff that they're like, hey, maybe this is going to be tough when you get there. And then— Well, like, cases of water are, <laughs> you know, obviously heavy— yeah. But when you land with them, you don't take off with them. Yeah. So once you can get up, you know, I guess you For can sure. leave them. The uh they yeah, which was cool. They wrote the weight on every supply. So any supplies you got, the weight was written on the Sharpie on it. But also like if you <clears throat> if you don't have enough horsepower to go in and do an out of ground effect hover, which is like what requires the most horsepower to hover with no ground effect. If you can't do that above the area and then slowly go down into it, you can't go in, period. So it's like you really got to match your weight and balance to the situation you're going to. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't control that descent speed, you, it really can tend to be a bad situation. Yeah. You, the, if the helicopter settles, I mean, you can just slam it into the ground. But they strategize well. As far as I know, there was zero private helicopter crashes. And, and this was all hill. Operation Airdrop <laughs> was writing the weights on it. They were distributing those supplies? Well, the yeah, private. day one, there was this private lady with a, the GoFundMe that I posted called Hope Mill Inc. And that lady was doing it too. But then Operation Airdrop came in, mm -hmm. and they're kind of a bigger nonprofit organization. They were doing the same thing. And then that's who we worked with the rest of the time we were there. Interesting. Yeah, it's such a it's such a crazy phenomenon to see that become so private i mean <clears throat> i mean it just doesn't make sense almost that it that it came it, to that i think i think for one there was a delay of not no one knew what was happening in north carolina that's great and then two i think there's a lot of red tape before the big dogs can get let out with you know the military helicopters mm -hmm. so even when we were there the guard was there in their black hawk but the clouds were too low on Sunday morning for them to leave, which technically it was VFR, so we could we we left, but I don't know what their limitations were, but the, there was guys on the ground with Blackhawks said they weren't allowed to leave. So it's like VFR is when you're it's like sight. Visual, visual. yeah. yeah. Visual Not flight. using computers. You can just fly. Yeah, like instrument is yeah. is a none of the private guys can really do it. I mean there's a very few really bad to the bone helicopters that can do it yeah but mostly it's like ems or military mm -hmm. an interesting thing you were talking about too <clears throat> is when the president comes into town they end up like you know stopping yeah, all TFR. flights so 
it almost negatively <clears throat> impacts. It definitely did. The but private guys. Operation Airdrop had had themselves together so well that they got all of the private guys on our team a uh, squat code to fly during the TFR. Okay. But think about all the other guys on the other sides of the mountains because there was just several helicopter crews. Like there was people were teaming up all over. I think I don't know if anyone else was able to do that. But I know, like, for example, my buddy in the EC-145, that black one I kept posting, he said he was flying, like, within a few miles of the president when they flew through, which is, like, super close. And he was... <clears throat> and, and he, he was... And he talked to him. Was he cleared to fly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he had the squad code. So I think in some ways it definitely did hurt the missions, but at least our side of the stuff, the Operation Airdrop side, I think... Most of those guys were airborne, but I was not there on that day. I wonder at what point they would shoot down a helicopter. Like, there's got to be a level yeah, where it's right. like. I think if it's posing an immediate threat, I don't uh, Yeah. What is it? I mean. You, the thing, yeah, I don't know what kind of precautions they take because you can't really get good radar down there. Like, we're down in the sticks, and my helicopter has, like, traffic systems on it, and, uh, they weren't working that great. There were so many helicopters. I mean, the thing was going berserk inside my cockpit, so I just had to turn it off. Like, I would fly over the hospital, and there would be four helicopters. There would be two on the helicopter pads, one in the parking lot and one in the backyard of the hospital. And, like, so there was just so much traffic. I'm not sure what they did. That's crazy. They yeah. have to know, though. I mean, those helicopters have some, like, the big green tops, the, they have some extremely good equipment on board. You hope they do, but, I mean, they didn't even <clears throat> know what was going on for days. So it's like. I have no idea. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, you you hope that they know what's going on, but then you actually hear, and it's like, oh, they didn't know. Dude, I need the Secret Service to hit me up and say, Cleet, come film a video about our helicopters. <laughs> that would be pretty interesting. I mean, what do they call it, Marine One when the president's uh, yeah. in Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the, what, those big dogs that they always fly in threes. Yeah. I know they call them green tops. I don't know. I think they're a Sikorsky, but they're sick. Yeah. They're massive. I'm sure they have some sick, like, security and armaments. I don't know. Yeah. Well, after 9-11, they upgraded that stuff pretty heavily. Yeah, I like, think they're upgrading them again. I think they're, they're getting new helicopters. Mm. I know they were getting a new, like, Air Force one. I know they negotiated yeah. the deals on mm -hmm. those. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. yeah, there's a new one. What do you think they do with the old one? You think you can try to purchase yourself? No, oh, would they take everything on it off on the <laughs> thing? Know. I mean, goodness sakes, there wouldn't be nothing Sammy left. Sammy used to work on Huey's, so if I get one of those. There wouldn't be nothing left. That you, I mean, when you decommission that, if you will, it's stripped. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, there's nothing there. I mean, if it's been used in that kind of service. Now, if it's just been used in regular service or anything, no, you can go buy it. But if it's been used something other than that, they got some trick stuff on that. And they're hard on those things, too. Oh. Like, you hear the stories of after 9-11, and it's like, yeah, we had that thing pinned to keep up with the, you know, the the jets that were flying next to us. So they were just, like, pinned to the, you know, 747 or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Oh, really? To keep up. <clears throat> sure. Wow. And they're just, like, riding like that for hours. <laughs> just yeah. full throttle. Man. And, and, you know, th this is a little side note. He'll kill me for saying it, but it's okay. A lot of folks that I've talked to and comment and everything else on it say, oh, Cleet done that for the attention. Let me tell you right now, looking in the camera on the thing, no, he did not. No, he did not. And you're saying, how do you know his head? I know the guy. I've been around him for a long time. He did not, okay? So for those folks that say, oh, is this an attention grabber? No, no, no. I don't really mind that, 100 though. times No. A couple so, people have said that, but the overwhelming majority have been really cool about it. Oh, and yes, yes. I don't yes. care. I mean, at the end of the day, I did get attention out of it. It wasn't my intention. We went up there on mm -hmm. a whim. I, I mean, exactly. there's cameras in my helicopter at all times. If you go fly it right now, they're already sitting in there set up. Yeah. But, and we turned them on because it was crazy stuff to see. But just the ability to put the GoFundMes on the, yeah. on the video, you know, one of them was at like $600 when I posted it. It's over a million. So if I got to take some heat, for getting attention on it, it well, doesn't mind me because I but, know but that. I, but I say to those to those same to people on the thing, can it? You know, I mean, <laughs> it, the man was out there dealing with what was there on the thing, and let's just leave it at that. You know what I mean? So that's. I thought it was a mix of wanting to help and wanting to fly 
<laughs> I was yeah. like, I was like, I know well, Garrett will take an excuse to fly his plane. That's and not everybody in the world wants to, you know. Yeah, but you know, but look at the risk he was taking on a brand new bird. Of course. I mean, you know that when you're flying in the mountains on the thing, you got a lot of updrafts, you know. And he he knows this as well as anybody on the thing. And those things are pretty quick. I mean, you can be in t- too close for something, and one comes up or down, and you don't know exactly what you're doing pretty quickly. You wind up in one of them trees. You know? Well, me and the private other private helicopter dudes, which they they should get as much credit as anybody. You know, all these private guys, whether they transported water bottles and toilet paper or pulled people out. They all showed up, and uh, the flying, like you said, it was the coolest flying you can do in a lot of ways. Like, I hate that it was for this reason, but for a lot of us just use our helicopters for stupid stuff, to have a real mission and be able to help people, yeah. there's nothing better to a private helicopter That was kind of half of my thought. Than that. that. It's like, it's kind of like the, the just-in-case scenario mm-hmm. that you probably play out in your head a million yeah. times comes true. And exactly. You actually can put the pavement, whatever, the tire yeah. to the pavement on that and and For sure. do the just-in-case scenario. 100%. And, and I, prove that you actually can do it to yeah. yourself. Yeah, like us private guys don't get to do the, the cool stuff like that. So everyone is pumped to fly. I think it's some points... There was like 50, 60 helicopters just showing up for the Operation Airdrop wow. because it was like, it wasn't like you were signed a contract and hey, I need you here at 8 a.m. It was literally just fly in. Yeah. And if you were there that day, they put your name on the board and gave you an assignment. And then when you came back, they erased your name. Like that was it. Well, there's probably service members <clears throat> that f- are trained to fly that have never actually done like missions. Because, yeah. Because, you know, a lot like, we're not in an active war right now, so a lot of them actually sure. haven't performed, like, missions. I, it's kind of weird to say, like, a mission, but, like, maybe an objective. Objective, I don't know. Like, I mean, it is a mission. It felt like a mission. when they're It like, just feels like Call of Duty to call, like, a mission, you know? Yeah, when they're like, hey, we think there's people here, and, and uh, like, I remember we got there, and we were able to help people in Cattail Creek, and then when they were like, we really need insulin, like, right now, I remember I was like, now I'm on a mission. I was like, we flew that baby back in the top of the green, like, as fast as we could, you know, drop down. They had it ready right back. Like, that stuff felt like we were straight up in a a life-saving mission. Well, seeing um, baby <clears throat> formula was, like, really crazy to see as, like, a father that relies on mm-hmm. formula. Yeah. Like, that. That hit Maddie like, hard. You know, food and water, like, as adults, we can go pretty long without food yeah most people can go pretty long without eating water's pretty needed but like formula is like that's that's dire it's critical stuff yeah. watching your baby hungry i yeah. don't know what more could what could hurt you more than seeing that 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 social media post like the baby one that i had shared that one <clears throat> had maddie like on the edge of her seat because she's it's so relatable for her four month old baby out of formula she's like dying to go and we we had to land like when we got it for the night so we were like ready in the morning helicopter already loaded the sun came up we went and when we pulled out of there with them like that was a such an amazing feeling i think for maddie and especially but we were also talking later like when the hurricane was hitting here like imagine a hurricane hits it's absolutely the most terrifying thing you've ever done you don't see anybody for three days and then some random dude lands his helicopter in your front yard. Your dad walks in the front door and says, hey, this helicopter can take you to civilization. And then you get in. Like, what an ex- what an insane experience yeah. that would be as a parent. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine that. I mean, I, I think back to what was uh, you would you would know where they were handing off the babies to the military leaving in yeah. uh, North Korea, right? Was that? Or Laos. Sa- well, uh, f- the start of it was in Saigon, off the rooftop there on the yeah. thing, sitting handing it off, and you know, take this and I'll stay here and I'll take the punishment on the thing, but let the child go. It's crazy, it and this is in America. Feels very similar yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, sure. I'll stay here. You just take the baby yeah. as the Black yeah. Hawk <laughs> took and, off. And a lot of them did, you know. That was, and there's some, some of those people around today to tell that story all day. Yeah, I was one of the. I mean, couldn't remember. It was just a baby. But then they found out that was them that was on that. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. If it was the military, I think I'd feel a little better about it. But just some random guy in a helicopter, you're like, hey, <laughs> you need to get in with this guy. I mean, I think like maybe the general public trusts helicopter people because it's like, all right, if you have this machine, entry. you must be pretty good. But like as a helicopter pilot, like just knowing how many people fly around here locally without a license, yeah, it <laughs> it, it would terrify me. But like, it was all they had, dude. Yeah, you want to say is that guy legal? Well, Does like, he know what he's doing? Yeah. The equivalent okay. in Florida is like a guy on an airboat showing up. Yeah, I mean, but, <laughs> like, but oh, an airboat, if the oh, motor no. quits, you kind of hang out. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's How'd true. How'd you get over here, dude? These a lot of these pilots were doing sick stuff, like really good piloting. I remember I was up with some guy in a Bell two hundred six, uh, and like him and I are laying in this, these crazy spots, and I'm just thinking like I don't know this guy. We're just talking like we're. Like we know what we're doing, but we were just winging it. Yeah. What? I don't know. Looking back, like, uh, and I, I wish I knew some of these guys so I could ask them. Like, I think a lot of us took risks we did not plan on taking. But when you fly over someone with waving their arms, it's like impossible to keep going. And I, I reflected on those videos, and I, I definitely think that uh, I shouldn't have done some of the things that I did because. If you, like Sam was mentioning, those downdrafts, when you're heavy and a downdraft would come in, I mean, you're just done. You're going you're going down, and who knows, maybe the helicopter will pull through. But we took risks that we probably shouldn't have, and, and a lot of the guys did. But like I said, zero private accidents in that deal. Yeah. So pretty incredible. What, what do they call it when they <clears throat> give the Medal of Freedom? Isn't that the highest civilian honor that the mm-hmm. presidents give? Sure. I feel like some of those might be in order. 100% some of the pilots should get them. Yeah. There was guys there for weeks. Those guys yeah. should get them. Yeah. There should be some Medal of Freedoms handed out. Yeah. Whether they're state level, I'm sure the states have their own that they can hand yeah. out. Even the Florida National Guard was there, I know. Mm-hmm. Even Florida recently had a, a response team designed just for this kind of thing. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting. I've I, been seeing that. The Helene guard. up in Perry, yeah, the Florida Guard, is like a first on-the-scene response yeah. team that's like which fairly new, I guess. Yeah. And it's a good representation of our country and the people that are in it. Because it. in other countries and have disasters like that, eh, it's not the same response that we have here. You know, and people might say, well, it's the resources. No, they got about the same resources on the thing, but it's the commitment. And the American people are just that way. That's the way, that, that's the way we are, you know. I know guys that personally spent hundreds of thousands of dollars just because, and they'll never get it back, which no. they don't even mind, but... They spent not only that, but a lot of time, and I would love to uh, see those guys get medals of freedom. Yeah, yeah, I that think they've be. earned some kind of a plaque somewhere that has yeah. the guys on it that were there. Yeah, <clears throat> and a lot of those people they weren't seeking, and they're not seeking recognition on the thing. And a lot of them, of course, they left their families at home, and the families not knowing, hey, that guy might be back, may not be back, you know. And it's true because. Until you're sitting in that seat like Garrett does on the thing, oh, it's it's different. It's very yeah. different on the thing. You know, flying here, you know, there's your currents are kind of stable, if you will. You have some fluctuation, yeah. but there, I'm telling you what, it's uh, you know. Well, like being in that zone too, and then Milton was coming, and I was like, we got to get prepared, <laughs> dude. Florida is so prepared for this stuff. Yeah. When I woke up. The morning after Milton, I woke up at like five because I was like, "All right, I'm gonna go fly, see if it, what we can do to help." I'm like, like, because we fly for Manatee County Search and Rescue, yeah. so I'm talking to those guys, and I pulled up flight aware, dude. The Coast Guard helicopters are already out. The sheriff helicopters are already out surveying. They have camera equipment, thermal. I mean, they're already on it. And uh, North Carolina has just never seen anything like this in a right. hundred years. Exactly. So they just exactly. got. Caught off guard, I guess. Florida, though. This is, this I mean, is like yeah, we're, every year we're very thing. well prepped here. But there, I mean, that's like, <clears throat> you can call it storm of the century, storm of the whatever on the thing, but it's just not, there's no preparation for it. Yeah. And they didn't know. I mean, who would have thought that there, that you'd have that kind of stuff going on from, you know, even talking to my grandparents. No, nothing like it ever happened. 
Well, sure enough, there it is. It wasn't know. even the hurricane. It was just the no, rain before. Just the rain. Well, Florida would never really require a helicopter type response like that because you'll always be able to get in with like a lifted truck or a boat, and yeah. those are everywhere. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. always going to be boats. There's always going to be lifted trucks. Here, they're more for spotting. I think you yeah. know, but exactly. yeah, like you yeah. said, there's so many awesome rednecks with airboats around here. Yes, yeah, exactly. Like people like JH when they were rescued yeah. very heavily. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like a lifted truck will get you, you know, which uh, in, 50 people. On in all reality, yeah, military it's way vehicles. better to use stuff like that to yeah. save people. So, so much safer. I mean, so much just, safer, yeah. way less risk, Cost. way more efficient. <laughs> yeah, so. it definitely makes a lot more sense. And, you know, I was thinking about that with the helicopter. <clears throat> Originally, I was like, oh, you know, Milton's coming. Like, hopefully he doesn't have to use the helicopter. But then I was like, oh, well, it doesn't really. Not even. Completely exactly. different world. Yeah. 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 It's we've, weird. We've saved one person in a helicopter this in Florida, and it was the one uh, Ian, mm-hmm. yeah, like actually picked somebody up. But Florida, like, it's just so good here, and everyone's so prepared for water because we're a water state. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, it was it was a mess. Also, like the the coast of Florida got really pummeled, and it's yeah. it's, it's All sad. Those houses like, are ruined. Our yeah. our neighborhood, basically Bradenton, our community got mm-hmm. pretty tore up. Across the Anna Marie Island, up to St. Pete, Clearwater, yeah. like it it's rough. Mm-hmm. But everyone. you you got your power back last out of everybody in the group. And how how long was it? Five two hours, maybe four or five days. Yeah. At most, I mean, it was 72 hours for Milton. Some of those people up in North Carolina, I bet don't get power. Some probably never will again, but yeah. some. No water, no power. They're looking at six months. Yeah. I will say, though, the average mountain dwelling Appalachian citizen is probably way more equipped to handle that no than power, yeah. your average Bradenton absolutely citizen. absolutely yeah. not to say that they you know they're fine but yeah. they're probably way more prepared and adaptive if to they lose limits. power they're probably like we're not getting this back for two weeks they probably just know yeah. that yeah yeah and i mean i've already seen like tents and stuff unfortunately they just got snow which yeah is, yeah can you believe it can't catch a break but did you see a lot of the videos of like excavators that have made so much progress on roads and that's private too Yes. Right. A lot is of that some of that just, private. Yeah, I think a lot of it is private. private. A lot of really? It is private because the, you know, the red tape contractual stuff on it, and it's just, I don't know. They're they're going about this thing kind of kind of different, if you will. So the private guys or the country people, whoever, whatever way you want to refer to them, say, wait, we can do that. We can get a road in there. So just dive in and do it. They're getting it started. And, and for they're sure. they're getting it started. Yeah. I saw one of them. They just took like a flatbed trailer. They just like. Dropped it made in the bridge. river and just made a bridge. Yeah, made a bridge. <laughs> and they just, you know, put a little yeah. dirt to make the ramps, and suddenly you can get to the other side of the river. Because, you know, the a lot of the typical setting was, you know, you have a stream here, and they build a house over there, and they got a little ridge to it, and the main road's over here. Well, when that's taken out, yeah. now what are you going to do? That was the worst of it, is there's yeah. so many roads that were just cut here, and then cut there, and then cut here. And then when the water would really cut it from a landslide, it's like a 20-foot ravine. To each section. Yeah. So you're just, unless you want to, like, <laughs> really do some hiking, you can't even go anywhere no. besides a helicopter. And even if you started hiking, you don't know if what you get to is even going to be there or have yeah. anything. Or, like, you get there and they're just destroyed. Could too. be worse than what you came from. You yeah. Know? So it's, uh, yeah. That, yeah, that's tough. I mean, I, I don't even, like, I always kind of have some preparedness mm-hmm. stuff. But sure. you can only prepare so much for for your house sliding down a hill. Yeah. There's not much. Oh, man. That was, that was so, so sad. And a lot of those people I knew and knew where they lived and some of it, and they're like, it's just gone. Just gone. Whew. Your property is gone. Yeah. Not just your home, like your actual land that you own. That's true. Yeah. Like, I mean, where you still can have you your, rebuild? you still have your like coordinate yeah, get, get borders your coordinate, of your yeah, property, yeah. but the actual. Like it changed. Topsoil is gone. Topsoil is gone. I mean, just yeah. like the the one going through uh, 40 from Asheville over to Knoxville, it, you know, so much rain, and it really started at the top. But by the time that landslide got to the highway down there, it is gaining speed, and it took it right into the Pigeon River, you know. That was, and how they're going to fix that back, I don't know. That's, that's just it's a hard big. hard to say. I wish I would have marked this house that I saw that slid down. I mean, this house is fully intact, and you could just see the stripe from the top where it sat. 
just sitting at the bottom fully intact. And I'm like, what's that guy going to do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are they, is, I'm sure the house is structurally messed up, but yeah. were they in it? Did they ride it down the hill? I don't know. I went <sighs> as close as I could, and I didn't see any movement. But we couldn't land. It was too. It was literally. It slid down into a forest, and there was just no one came out. We circled a bunch, but stuff like that. I'm like, if your house is now on the other person's property, what do you do? Yeah. Then. Yeah. Well, you you think about like <clears throat> Katrina a lot, where people were on the rooftops writing things on the roof, the help, like things like that, mm-hmm. climbing out as the flood waters came up through their roofs, and you see That's those kind of, you know. You got to almost be prepared to at least get a signal out. I saw yeah. like the mirror, which was really crazy to see mm-hmm. that Greg posted. Yep. Things like that, like yeah. getting the attention is hard mm-hmm. enough, and having the clearing and people. Yeah, there's so much. There's is so that, much there on that. Is Katrina when that Cajun Navy started? Yeah. Yes. That it is. is. Yeah. Those guys were there, and then the, those guys were coming to Florida too for Milton. Like, so I guess that's just a private group of people that want to help people. And that started in Katrina, right? So. Yeah, and, and a lot of the folks, I don't know, uh, our property out there, ours, I mean, Garrett's uh, property out there, was a staging area, you know, for a lot of these crews coming in. And there's crews from all over the USA. Matter of fact, the ones that put the poles in for the uh, drag strip, that's a Minnesota crew. Hmm. And they put them things out oh, there. Oh, for the replacing the power poles? Yeah. yeah that exactly. was a Minnesota crew. So we went over and said, hey, let's cook for them. Yeah, Sam was out there cooking for all the... There was a ton of trucks staged at the Freedom Factory. Sam's out. I drive by Sam at the table. He's, like, grilling yeah. with some friends. They're making food for all these people. We had a good time. You and Adam out there grilling up? We had a, yeah, That's we had awesome. a good time with it. So it's, it's, I mean, them people that were given of their time. Now, some of them will get contracts on it, but a lot of them didn't, and they just was given of their time, money, equipment, their yeah. families. All to come for that on the thing, which I was grateful for. I mean, the least we could do is cook a little something for him. The that linemen, nice. of course, deserve an insane amount of praise yeah. and respect because oh. those guys, at the drop of a hat, are in Florida by the thousands. They yeah. crushed it. Like, it's insane to see. They, how many people were out of power? I think you had a thing. Um, it was like up to forty <clears throat> percent of Manatee County at one point yeah. was out of power. Yeah. I think, like, mm-hmm. house, yeah, it was in maybe six. Yeah. I don't even want to guess the number, but it was a lot of people out of power. Yeah. These dudes got almost the entire state down to like one yeah. percent without power, yeah, within five days. And they got them power, but it's one of those deals if your house is flooded up to the outlets, they have to like, really, yeah, you have to like get them to come in and like certify it and everything. You have to change all your outlets. And my grandma's going through it right now. Think about how many poles and trees are down just in this area. It was just. That's a job. Yeah, they came over and started that morning and said, we should have your power by tonight. And I'm thinking, I don't know. There's a lot of poles out there. And that the why you're all feeding over them? The place. And sure enough, <laughs> they did. Yeah, oh, you give them a couple extra cheeseburgers. Here, That's what Sam's like, like, hey, by guys. the way, on, my house is yeah. right yeah. there. Does yeah. feeding them slow them down or speeding them up? <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we served them two meals. feed them too much. Two meals each day. <laughs> But it was it was good. They were they, uh, people are know. like, Cleet, it's so nice of you to let people stage at the track." I'm like, "Yeah, because I wanted them to put our power back." <laughs> yeah, and the track <laughs> survived we're... pretty well, right? Oh, the track did good. I mean, I think yeah, total under total for our stuff were 150 grand in damage, which is better than most hurricanes. Yeah, and we got hit the hardest. Yeah, but I think because of the other ones, they like cleaned us out. So like all of our structurally unstable stuff is already toast. Yeah. <laughs> So we just lost, like, garage doors. Um, what else did we lose? Well, there was, you know, the one one side of the it's building down cars. the home thing, which was, you know, took it off. Oh, we lost the back of the shop, yeah. lean-to, mm-hmm. Freedom Factory sponsor boards, a mm-hmm. lot of fencing. Actually, well, lots of fencing. I know we're down. over 25 grand in fencing. Already. Lots of fencing come down. I don't know if you saw the new fencing. It's great. And they and put then, it up in a hurry. But that was chain link fence that came down, right? Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's from 1970. It's still crazy because yeah. there's nothing really to catch wind there Yeah, for that to come down. BMP yeah, but like is... I say, it's like football. When one starts, they all pile on. And when one started, like, okay, let's run over there. And it was it was a mess, yeah. Drag strip, I'm guessing hundred and. Forty thousand yeah. dollars of damage. Yeah, it's a good good yeah. guess. If it got hit a little harder. Yeah, yeah. thankfully some of, build- some of the buildings some of the buildings on it. Yeah, were the <clears throat> thing that kept some of the buildings from getting completely crushed yeah. was the golf carts inside of it. I know. Choice golf carts. Choice <laughs> golf carts got hit. <laughs> oh, those weren't like, okay. 
Sir Troy's. I'm glad. I just saw a post actually like today that said hurricane season is coming to a close. But there's one hitting Cuba. Yeah. But they're like with the cold front we just got, there's no way for a hurricane to make it up where we live. They hit Cuba a lot, but you never really see anything or hear anything out of Cuba, which is probably by design. It's by design. Interesting. Yeah. Come on. It's a very odd situation That's an interesting they got point. going on there. Because you never yeah. you hear Puerto Rico got hit and then it hits Cuba too, yeah. but you never hear anything about Cuba. Yeah. So well, you can't hear anything bad about that. I mean, come on. Man. Yeah, of course. They're, Think about it. They're Paul. perfect. Think about it. 